Some of the things that have managed to survive since Atlantis, like the Bible, which has been highly, highly edited from what it used to be. The things I'm teaching now used to be in the text that were supposed to be in the Bible. In the Bible, in the book called Revelation, there's a very colorful picture of events that were to take place at some mysterious unknown times called the end times. And it depicted a certain series of things about angels and seven seals and all sorts of very interesting things people have been trying to figure out what they mean for ages. In that story, that story is encoded. It was encrypted in symbol form. And it was a story about technology. And it was a story about a planned invasion that was going to go down here. And it was a story about a group of Anunnaki races that are called the Anu Elohim and the Jehovian Anunnaki. Now, before the Jehovian Anunnaki groups wanted to take over this planet, human beings didn't call it that Jehovah, nor did they call it Yahweh. Those were names of collectives, family names, of fallen angelic races that were inserted into our holy texts to hijack our religions, to hijack our stories, and there was a deadline. There was a deadline for when the game would be up here. In Atlantis, we were very aware. We had minimum of 12 strands of DNA. We had huge amounts of awareness. We knew that we were avatars. We knew our commission as planetary guardians. We knew Templar mechanics, the sacred sciences. The sciences. And there were events that took place that we lost a few rounds in some battles with the fallen angelic races. And when I say fallen angelic, remember, you can picture the, you know, the sci-fi channel and use ET if you want to to substitute because it's the same thing. They're the same beings. They came in and they got a few rounds on their side where they messed up the planetary grids so badly that they were able to create something called a scalar sonic pulse that ran through the planetary grids. It's a magnetic pulse that messes with the magnetic fields. Now even our scientists know that the planetary magnetic fields have a whole lot to do with memory and with the function of human consciousness. They don't exactly know why yet, but the why is because consciousness is connected to the DNA template, and the DNA template is made of scalar wave patterns, which are electromagnetic wave patterns. So if there is a large magnetic disruption in the planetary fields, you can do amazing things to the DNA of life forms on that planet. The reason we have no memory right now is because of something that was done in Atlantis. And the reason it is very important that we begin to try to very quickly grasp as much of ourselves as we can, even if we don't know we have our avatar levels of self, if we can begin with believing that we do, that's how you find them. You're not going to be able to integrate your higher parts of self unless you realize they're there. But right now, we have about two years, not even really, we have to the end of 2002 to reach a certain level of fixing planetary grids that if it is not accomplished, there's going to be something called Plan B put in motion. Now, when I talk about Plan A and Plan B, Plan A was the founder's plan of what they would do when the stellar activation cycle came. They had a set of things they wanted to do to get the planetary grids fixed so this place would not go into pole shift. Plan B happens when Plan A doesn't work. Plan B would be evacuations. I've never ever been the doom and gloom type person. And I told the Iani when I was working with them the last couple of years, say, don't start talking to me about pole shift because I don't want to hear it. You have all sorts of people out there in the New Age movement, you know, say all sorts of horrible things are going to happen. If it's that bad, we can't do anything about it. I don't want to know. And I certainly don't want to teach it. You know? And he said, all right, well, actually, it's not that bad. We've focused on solutions all along. We have been, we've had to very quickly move through helping people to understand cathar healing so they'd understand their body systems, tangible structure of the soul, so they'd understand how those body systems plug into their spiritual consciousness systems, and then very quickly go into planetary grid mechanics so we could begin to work with the planetary grids to create healing. And a lot has been done already. We've made great accomplishments. But at this point, our accomplishments have been so well, so done so well in healing the planetary grids that the agendas of the fallen angelic races, agendas they've held literally since the Atlantean period, 
when they were just going to saunter in here and just take over the place, very easily they were going to actually come in and introduce themselves with names like Moses and say, hi, we created you. We're your space brothers, you know, and, and just show us how to run our planet better. And there was an objective at the end of it. They don't want humans. They don't even want surface Earth. Earth is a strategic location for something called the Halls of Amenti Stargates. Earth has portals that lead directly into the Halls of Amenti Stargates. The Halls of Amenti Stargates are a universal stargate system that literally extends into all of the primary stargates in our 15-dimensional time matrix. That's what they're after. Earth is the most vulnerable link in the chain of galaxies that have connection to the Halls of Amenti Stargates. So what they had in mind for us, way back in Atlantis when they set this plan, was make us stupid, erase our memories, give us some false books and things, take the old books and just insert stuff and take out the good stuff, house our little sheep by the time they were ready to come in, then set a series of events in motion that would make them able to come in very easily with no resistance. Now, one of the ways to do that would be, first of all, to have people believing in an externalized God that's outside of themselves, that has a certain name and a certain face. All right, you already got an image to use when you come in to say hi that people will be receptive to. One of the plan, the part of the plan, and this is called the Illuminati Master Plan, the One World Order Master Plan, was to set up about 100 years before subtle contact. That's when the channeling movement started. Subtle contact with their races. Their races meaning the hybrid races who don't have human souls incarnate in them, but who have either Anunnaki or Draconian souls incarnate in them. The interesting thing is, we've all been taught since our memory was erased, that we are only one race. We have bodies that are very similar, and because of what's been done to the DNA, right now our DNA appears to be the same, because certain portions of the DNA are repressed in both races, so the similarities show, but the differences don't. About 100 years ago, the channeling movement actually got its seeds planted, because it was time. That's when the Anunnaki started to connect with some of their hybrids. Their hybrids don't know their hybrids. They, don't, they, they think they're just human like anybody else. They don't know what human is either. You know? <coughs> the hybrid people are not bad people. It's not that they're you know, bad fallen angelic people. They're just people who lost their memory too. And the reason they lost their memory is they were trying to rebel against and get away from the fallen angelic collectives in Atlantis. That was part of the reason they had their hybrids that were saying, well, we're starting to grow and understand that the, the ways you're doing things and dominion and killing other life forms and things, that's wrong. We don't want to be part of your collective anymore. They were going into what was called the Emerald Covenant Christos contract. And that meant that the fallen angelics hold on the planet was getting less and less. If they lost their hybrid races, they didn't have, and they would have a very hard time coming in directly because most of them can't live physically on this planet because of their own biologies. So we have a situation right now where there is progressively, for a hundred years, been an invasion, a very quiet, subtle invasion. The plan for the invasion was created in um, 9,560 BC. It was formalized then. It's been there for a long time. But that's when it got formalized in a whole group of Anunnaki races. Anunnaki races are races that were created by what's called the fallen Anu Elohim. Okay, they were, they have Elohai and Elohim. They are two different. The Elohai Elohim are the founders races, one set of founders races. The Anu Elohim are ones that were fallen angelics. They chose to sever their connection to source and they started to create dominion agendas and literally started to feed off the rest of the time matrix. So when I talk about Anunnaki, I'm talking about the children of the fallen Anu Elohim. Just like when I talk about humans, I'm talking about the children of the Elohai. They came in here as the guardians. There are numerous different groups of Anunnaki. Many of them don't like each other. They've been warring with each other as much as they've been warring with humans or anything else. But in 9560 BC, there was agreement made by several competing groups. They're called the Palladian Nibiruan Anunnaki. That means some of them are from the Pleiades star system. Some of them are from a planet called Nibiru, which used to be our 12th planet until they hijacked its orbit, and now it only circulates in here every 3,600 and some years. With the Luciferian Covenant Agreement, it was a step-by-step -step plan to, first of all, 
level the playing field, which they did during the Atlantean flood period in 9,558 BC. They used a technology called APIN systems. APIN is a, a physical technology. It's called the Atlantean Pylon Implant Network System. Imagine microchips. Okay, imagine microchips that operate through particularly selenite types of quartz. You know, we use quartz and radios and different things. It's a mineral. It has some certain properties as far as electrical, you know, electrical transmission and transduction goes. There's an advanced technology that utilizes what would be considered very advanced microchip technology that can be used on a planetary level, where literally grids were laid out all across the planet. The planet was mapped, and it was mapped from, the from above, from spaceships. I mean, they, they weren't, you know, just, they weren't foot soldiers like we have been down here. We weren't then either. There were these grids put in to the planet that would receive remote frequency transmissions from other planetary systems. They could be used for good things, or they could be used for horrible things. And in Atlantis, they were used for horrible things. They were used, these APIM systems, were used by the Anunnaki and several other competing groups to literally reverse the natural electromagnetic balances of Earth's magnetic fields, which totally messed up the DNA of humans. Now, once that was done, you had a bunch of what used to be angelic humans and a lesser amount of hybrid Illuminati races that really just wanted to be good guys. All of a sudden, they're all running around not knowing who they are, having mutations in their brainwaves. The brainwaves aren't working the same way. Their hormones were not working the same way. What used to be an 800-year lifespan went down to about 100 because of these electromagnetic changes that were made to happen on the, on, on the planet because of these advanced technologies. Now, these technologies are not just something that were a horrible problem in our past. The APIM systems, these microchip networks that were literally implanted throughout the planetary grids in key positions in relation to stargates, portals, ley lines, and what are called axiotonal lines, which are the main energy vertical running lines that circulate energy through the planet. These systems are part of what's happening today. World War II had to do with these systems. You don't read that in the history books either.